Hosanna. It's Palm Sunday. Welcome to worship. It's so good to see all of your wonderfulnesses. <laughs> Welcome to worship. Um, we have a couple announcements before we get started here. Um, please join us for our wonderful adult study on Sunday mornings at 930. However, we will not have the Sunday school classes either for the adults or children next week on Easter Sunday. A very special Sunday next week. Um, I'm wondering, I, I did not put the women's breakfast in on Thursday. Are we having that on Thursday, on Monday, Thursday? Anybody know? Yes, we can. Okay. Golden Link on Thursday at 9.30, all the women for breakfast. Next Sunday, like I said, is Easter Sunday. We have a great time planned for the kiddos and finding Easter eggs, and um, please join us. We will have a wonderful worship service together and have breakfast together after worship. We have some very special people that are awaiting, so without further ado, let us welcome the children. Walk. 
Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. Let's turn in our hymnals to number 280 and sing All Glory, God, and Word. foolish cross, tottering down the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey, you are not the savior we expect. Your power doesn't look like the power we want our God to demonstrate. Your wisdom makes no sense to us. We are happy to join the crowd waving branches, but not so sure we want to follow you into the temple courts into the upper room, into the garden of Gethsemane, to the foot of the cross. Forgive our false assumptions. Clarify our clouded vision. Let us relax into the foolishness of your love, your grace. Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Save us, we beseech you. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Would you stand for the reading of the gospel? Our gospel reading today is found in Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they, they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This Sunday is not just Palm Sunday. It's more appropriately referred to as Palm slash Passion Sunday. And since we aren't going to be having a Good Friday service so we can focus on that passion part of what happens, we will do both today. As the front of your bulletin shows, Palms and Passion. The children sang today. They started our worship service off so beautifully with a great song. The chorus was praise and glory, everybody sing, sing Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Hosanna in the English dictionary means an expression of adoration, praise, or joy. So 
that's what we do. That's what we did. That's what makes the children's song very meaningful. And we do praise God. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. However, in Hebrew, the word Hosanna is Yasha. Can everyone say that with me? Yasha. Y-A-S-H-A. -S Yasha. Yasha actually means something a bit different. It means liberate us, save us. Yasha, Hosanna, liberate us, save us, save us, Jesus. It's shouted with joy because it, because it holds a sense of hope. The Israelites had grown used to shouting, Yasha, to the Lord God but not in the way that we think of it today. It wasn't necessarily accolades of praise. It was a plea for deliverance. And we heard that in the psalm reading that Jeannie read. Yasha, come and save us. Israel had gotten really used to God getting them out of difficult situations, saving them time and time and time again. They experienced 400 years of slavery in Egypt, and then God sent Moses to lead them in an exodus. God delivered them, how? By obliterating the enemies that pursued them. Some of those stories from the Old Testament may seem sort of brutal, but they're stories of how fiercely protective our God is over his people. Wiping out the threats against them, destroying whole cities that were against God's chosen ones. So we have to remember that Israel's history was steeped in God fighting their physical battles for them on a war horse. But now, in the New Testament, Jesus steps onto the scene a century after Rome takes control, and the people wanted to see similar results from this Jesus. After all, if you are the Son of God, hmm, deliver us from our oppression here. After all, they cried out to God more than 200 times, and the Lord God came through for them. They were expecting a powerful king to overrule the oppressiveness that they were under, and they expected Jesus to do things the same way that God had always done it in the past. Wipe them out. But instead of the same ways, which didn't seem to work in the long run for the people, because it never seemed like they really got it, God had a new plan. Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem on a donkey's colt, meek and mild, a prince filled with peace, not a warrior king. Palm branches are a symbol of victory. Did you know that? When we wave our palm branches, we have the privilege of knowing, yes, a victory was won. But in their last-ditched effort of hope in this Jesus guy, they lay down their palm branches and they shout, Yasha, help us, free us from all of this tyranny. They were expecting that he would, but when things went south, they didn't know where to turn. Hope kind of vanished for them. But the time had come for them to ask themselves a question. And I want to ask you the question today. What is your real threat? There will always be a Rome. There will always be leaders that you don't like. Leaders that are bloodthirsty and wanting power. God sent Jesus to help us face the more important question here. What's really the problem in your life? We can always look out here and name things out here, right? Well, them or that. But Jesus comes to shine light on the bigger picture. The problem out here in the physical sense, the Roman Empire for them, 
whatever for us, the governmental leaders of our day, the person at work that's been really hard to deal with, your family member who is very annoying and just doesn't get it, those things out here, these are challenging things, yes, but our problem lies much deeper than what is out here. Our problem is what lurks in here. So Jesus had an even deeper, more endearing form of liberation in mind. They and you and I, we don't need to be rescued from Rome, quote unquote. We need to be rescued from the thing that separates us from God, sin. And this is what Jesus came to save us from. He came to destroy sin and death. And I'm not sure they realize the depth of this on Palm Sunday. And perhaps we don't either. We still sing Hosanna in our churches as a shout of joyful praise, but let's also remember the depth of the meaning of the word, which is what we're asking Jesus for, to liberate us and save us. And instead of asking God to remove us from our physical problems and our enemies, let's thank God for sending Jesus to rescue us from the deeper things in our lives, the sin that keep us, keeps us from him. Yasha, Hosanna. Amen. Stand. Let's join in singing, lift up your hands, ye mighty gates, number 215 in our hymns.
celebrations, but we aren't always willing to go through what comes after that. While we have not called for your death, we have often not shouted of your greatness either, nor have we expressed delight in the salvation you have won for us. Forgive us and draw us closer to you so that we may become more faithful servants to you, our King of glory. Amen. In Christ, God hears, God answers, God sets us free. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our offering is, uh, plates are at the back. Um, we welcome your joyful giving, and um, we know that you give of your lives too outside of this place and here as well, and we honor and praise God for those gifts. We have the privilege of entering a time of prayer, and um, is there any prayer requests or praises that you would like to mention today? Katie. Okay, that's a celebration. Diana and Taylor's wedding anniversary on Thursday. Peggy. Indeed, and I forgot to do this, so. I'm not going to make her play for herself. Saturday, the day before Easter. So if you think of it, please reach out to her too. We are thankful for these birthdays. Are there other birthdays? Other birthdays first that I didn't know about? Okay, Bill? Jennifer, possible cancer. Prayers for Bill's daughter, Jennifer. Randy. Uh, Jerry Gillespie, Sandy, and Christina Gillespie. Mm. Gary Coet and family. Gary was, yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Bob and Tracy, what is there something? Thankful that Bob's shoulder surgery went good last week, and um, prayers for more blessings in that. Bob? Oh, no. So that's your son's friend? Okay, yes, we'll pray for them. Griffin? I'm telling you, huh? Leave it to Griffin. Where have you been? I like these prayers, these praises. Griffin went swimming yesterday, and he was able to go underwater for a little bit. He came up. We're very thankful for that. Good job, Griffin. For three hours. Good time with family. Thanksgiving for that. Yeah. 
Johnson. Dave. Okay. Dave's sister, Bev, mm -hmm. her surgery, possible cancer there too. Gail. And that's the other thing I was going to say is that the snowbirds came home, the Tylers, the Henrys, we are so grateful for them. The snowbirds have returned. Yeah, that's true. The, the Gullicksons are still in Texas. We have to get them home. Uh, yeah, Jim too. Yes, Jim and Sandy. Better pray for your pastor. I seem to have a brain problem lately with fog or something, remembering people and things and singing and <laughs> forgetting things. Anything else? Faith? Okay, I'm not sure exactly what that was. But she's thankful for Dad and the Easter Bunny bringing meat sticks or something like this. Okay. We're thankful. Grace. Thursday, last Thursday was the day that Grace's dad passed 13 years ago, and we remember him with love today. Peggy. Absolutely. The promise of hope in this season. Okay, let's pray together. God of love who draws us by the power of your Holy Spirit. We come to you today with our prayer concerns and our praises. Thank you so much for Griffin and Faith saying things that they're grateful for and that, that they mean so much to them. We are grateful for them. Thank you for the hope in this season. We proclaim your goodness. Bless your beautiful world, God. Restore life and light to all the dark places that need your goodness. Thank you for simply everything, but especially the gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. Help us as we strive to be your beloved community. As we walk with your son, Jesus, in this holy week, give each of us insights and fill us with wonder at what you have done and continue to do for us day after day after day. Would you please bring healing, God, to us in all the ways that you know we need it most? Would you help us to know if there's something that we can do to bring your love and healing to our neighbor? We do lift up to you, those who are in pain, those who are sick and afflicted with disease or hardships. We especially think of Jennifer, Gary and his family, Bev, Bob and Tracy's daughter and son-in-law, his friend and their families, and the friend that had the stroke, and for Bob's shoulder. And God, we thank you for a good surgery. We thank you for birthdays. We thank you for the life of Grace's dad. Bless Taylor and Diana as they celebrate an anniversary this week. May your love and joy permeate their home. We place all into your loving hands, God, and we pray as your son has taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I love preaching so much, I'm going to preach another sermon to you. But I shortened them. So there's a reason for this, and I think you'll see it. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he exited in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even though highly, even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the, um, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I just want you to lift up your hearts. We won't stand for the reading of the gospel, but lift up your hearts as we read from the gospel of John, chapter 19. Verses 28 through 30. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill scripture, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of Aesop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received this wine, he said, It is Finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. My husband was folding up the bulletin because we forgot to sing a song. <laughs> I told you, pastor needs prayer. <laughs> Let's sing that song now. We'll stay seated. Number 2113 in the black books. <clears throat>
Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for reminding us of your sacrifice. Be with us as we travel this road. In your precious name, amen. I am remembering a day over a year ago when I sat in a coffee shop in Indiana with my son Jake. He had recently heard a message at church that had great impact on him, and he said, Mom, have you ever heard of the word tetelestai? I said, no. I love words. You guys know I love words. I said, no, I've not heard of it. Tell me about it. What does it mean? And as he explained the meaning of the word, I was literally riveted. After he shared a bit about it, I had kind of a weird response. <laughs> you'll think this is weird right now, but after you hear the rest of the sermon, you'll know why I said this. I said, you know, honey, to my son, I don't have a tattoo, but if I had one, it would be this word. This word I would put on my body. To tell us die. The ancient Greeks boast of being able to say very much with very little words. They would bring together a sea of matter in a, just a drop of language. To Telestai comes from the verb teleo, which means to bring to an end, to complete, to accomplish. It signifies the successful end to a particular course of action. This was what Jesus declared on the cross before giving up his spirit. It is finished. The words that came from our Savior's lips at the end of his life came at a deep cost to him. As he was struggling to breathe, he lifted himself up just enough to say one last thing for us. I found some examples of the word tetelestai and how it would have probably been used in ancient times. And there's six things that I'm going to talk about that will solidify the meaning of this word. I hope you take it with you forever. Just like at the beginning, yasha, the Hebrew word and the Greek word tetelestai. Number one, servanthood. After completing a task set by a mask master, the servant would go back to the master and say, what's the word? Tetelestai. Meaning, I have finished what you told me to do. In John 4.34, Jesus said, I have come to do the will of my Father and to finish his work. The task that God gave Jesus, the sacrificial lamb of God, would culminate in and be completed at the cross. By submitting to the Father's will, Jesus displayed, displayed ultimate servanthood. Next, sacrifice. Before a lamb was sacrificed, the priest would inspect it to make sure that it was without spot or blemish. If it was so, the priest would pronounce, Tetelestai, that is, it is without blemish. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter says that Jesus is the lamb without spot or blemish, the perfect sacrifice. And he says, we were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Next, battle victory. Soldiers who were victorious over their enemies would declare, to tell us die, this is a victory cry. On the cross, when Jesus cried out, to tell us die, he was not giving the last gasp of a worn out life in defeat. Absolutely not. He was declaring victory over Satan, sin, and death. 
his divine accomplishment as the redeemer of sinners was complete. Victory. Next, artwork. When an artist created a work of art, for instance, a painting or a sculpture, he would inspect it at the end and say, to Telestai. The prophecies in the Old Testament were not often understood until events had come to pass. For us who now have access to both the Old and New Testament, we can see how God's plan throughout the ages unfolded beautifully. The promised seed of a woman that would crush the serpent's head as recorded in Genesis 3.15 was fulfilled in Jesus. It's an intricately woven story with God initiating every twist and turn. And it's God's artistic masterpiece that we can recognize as Tetelestai, the perfect masterpiece. Next, a freed prisoner. When a Roman citizen was convicted of a crime, he would be thrown into prison. A certificate of debt would be nailed in front of his prison cell listing all the crimes he had committed. When that prisoner had served his time, when that prisoner... Boy, isn't it, is it working now? Okay. When the prisoner had, this is a very important message. I will make sure you hear it. I'll switch to this. When the prisoner had served his time, the judge would put him in a prison and he would write, he would, the judge who had put him into prison would write on the certificate of debt to Telestai. The freed prisoner would keep the certificate in case he was ever questioned about why he was no longer in prison. You know what this did? This enabled the ex-prisoner to feel safe and secure that he would never be put back into prison for those crimes that he had committed. We too we too are freed prisoners. The only difference is that we could never pay the price. Jesus paid the price on our behalf and freed us from the prison of our sins and stamped the word to tell us die on our certificate of death and debt. That's why I would put that word on me. Last, paid in full. The merchants used the term to Telestai when a transaction was completed with full payment. I heard that sometimes this word would be written on receipts even in the ancient world. The one and only perfect sacrificial lamb of God will ensure that the price of our sins is paid in full. No one will ever be able to add or subtract from this transaction. It is a complete, full and perfect payment, a once and for all transaction. Interestingly, tetelestai is in the perfect tense in the Greek language. Maybe some of you listened in your English classes and understood tenses of verbs and such. I didn't ever understand that in the English language. <laughs> but it makes understanding things so wonderful in these other, in the Greek language and in the Hebrew language. You see, because the past tense looks back an event and says, oh yeah, um, history said that happened. But if a word was in the perfect tense, it speaks of an action that has been accomplished in the past, continues to have lasting, impactful results now, and will continue to have lasting results forever. To tell us die. Jesus didn't say, 
I am finished, dying in exhaustion and defeat. He didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. He laid down his life because everything he came to do was done. Scripture says his life cannot be taken from him. He laid it down. All the scriptures were fulfilled. Sin and death and separation were defeated once and for all. This is the good news of Good Friday. Good Friday is called good because of what Jesus completed in the Father's plan. This is why it would be incomplete for us to go from shouting, Yasha, Hosanna, save us, to hallelujah, he is risen. We must travel through this holy week and remember the cost. Remember the cost. The immense love that was exhibited when Jesus laid down his life lovingly for us and stamped tetelestai on every single one of our sins. Paid in full. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, as we enter this week, a week that completely changed everything, help us to remember how you came to serve us, how you came to teach us, how you came to love us, and you came to conquer death and sin for us and call us your work of art before your Father and our God. Your death holds saving power, and it's a work that continues to have effect. It ripples out and out and out. Without this week, we would be lost in sin. But you defeated sin, death, and the enemy. Help us to sink into this week with a posture of repentance and sheer gratitude. Let us remember your gift of love that is so great we cannot understand it. We can only receive it. Let us walk closely with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.